Welcome back everybody, my name is Tucker, this is Sporting Logically, and today I wanted to once again talk about NBA player salaries. I have talked a lot on this channel about how much players get paid, but for the most part it's been relative to their on-court production or to other players at their same position. The discussion has always used the context of the NBA to compare the amount of money they make, but recently there's been a lot of discussion in the comment section about the annual salaries of NBA players relative to the rest of the working population. Two weeks ago, I made a video about how Isaiah Thomas lost over $100 million over the course of essentially 16 months, which has quickly become the most commented on video I've ever made. Many of the discussions have centered around whether the Celtics were wrong to do what they did, whether or not loyalty in sports is truly dead, and to my surprise, a whole host of comments about the millions of dollars NBA players and professional athletes in general are paid to play a sport for a living. The opinions themselves didn't really surprise me, as it's a very common statement for people to make that professional athletes make too much money. It just wasn't a discussion that I expected that particular video to start. But since it has, let's talk about it. Let's be clear about what the discussion is first. Professional athletes are paid a lot of money to do something that they love, to play a sport. And that is a situation that an unfortunately few number of people in this world find themselves in. But this isn't a discussion on the morals of paying someone 30 plus million dollars to play basketball when there are plenty of other people that need that money more than they do. It's simply a discussion on whether or not NBA players are worth the money they make for the services they provide. And that is exactly the basis of this video, being fairly compensated by your company for the value you provide to it. Most people don't want to actively be paid less than what they're worth in their field and some jobs are simply more valuable than others. That's just the way it is in the US. In February, Forbes reported that the NBA generated over $7 billion in revenue and that the average franchise is worth $1.65 billion, both record numbers for the league. Perhaps even more impressively, every NBA franchise is now valued at over a billion dollars for the first time in league history. As I've talked about before on this channel, the NBA is arguably the healthiest it has ever been, relatively free from scandal, with a deep and intriguing talent pool, and a truly unique year-round product with a level of engagement throughout the calendar year that has rarely, if ever, been rivaled in any other sport. With this relatively newfound health, the players that drive the league are also seeing record high salaries. 38 different players made at least $20 million for the 2017-18 season alone, according to ESPN and 15 of them made at least $25 million. Many fans, myself included, start to lose perspective on these numbers and only see them in the context of team building, how each contract fits in a team's payroll, and how it allows or prevents them from signing new talent and improving their team. But the question is worth asking, is this too much money for a person to make for essentially playing a game? There are a lot of opinions on this, but strictly in terms of their value to the product the league is selling, and the services they provide? No. Here's why. My father is a software developer, a job he's held for over 30 years and one he has greatly enjoyed. He could walk into the office tomorrow and ask for a huge raise if he chose to, something that successful NBA players often do when their contract runs out. The difference is there's no hard cap on what my father can make on an annual basis at his current company or any other. If someone is willing to pay him that huge raise, then that's what his services are worth to them. That isn't to say that there aren't budgetary constraints to how much a company would be willing to pay him, and there are other factors at play such as age and work performance that determine how much he is paid, but on paper, he could ask for any number, realistic or not. There's no salary cap in the software developer space. In the NBA, however, there are rookie wage scales, max contracts and salaries, and a hard cap on team payroll. Each of these are meant to be measures of keeping the NBA competitive, making sure that the bigger market teams with more money can't just outspend the competition. But to those that say NBA players make too much money, I ask, what would it be like if there was a hard cap on your salary at your job? Whatever field you work in, what if you were the absolute best at it in the entire world? There was nobody on the planet that could perform your job as well as you could. You'd be pretty valuable, right? And with all of the hard work and dedication, along with undoubtedly some natural talent that would have to come with it that allowed you to become the best at what you do, 
you would want to be fairly compensated for that value you provide, I'm sure. It wouldn't be about the total number you'd be paid for that service you provide to the company. It would be about being paid what you're worth for the value you provide as the absolute best at what you do. But in this new reality where you're the best in the world in your specific field, there is a cap on how much money you could make annually, preventing you from receiving that fair compensation. In all honesty, there are a fair amount of players in the NBA that, strictly in this sense, are actually underpaid. Not in the idea that they're starving or lacking for money, trust me, nobody's asking you to feel bad for these guys, but rather in the idea that the salary cap regulates how much money they can make from their contract, when in an open market without that cap, they'd be worth much more to an NBA team. There are a limited number of people on earth that can play basketball at an NBA level and there are 30 teams willing to pay a lot of money for those people that can do it best. The success and bottom line of NBA franchises are directly related to their success on the court, which, along with a limited employee pool and very specialized job description, makes players like LeBron James extremely valuable. When James left the Cleveland Cavaliers in 2010, the financial side of the franchise took a significant hit as the on-court product suffered. Sure, there was fan excitement when Kyrie Irving was drafted first overall soon after, but the arena wasn't being filled the same way it was when James was dragging teams to near championship contention. But with his return home in 2014, the financial fortunes of the Cavaliers also saw a comeback. In the first year of his return to his home state, the team reportedly saw a 45% increase in revenue, all because of the ripple effect of one player. Just think about that for a second. One employee switches to a new company, and that company sees a 45% increase in revenue as a direct result of their impact. Just think about how valuable that employee is. Let's just say that this offseason, the NBA eliminated team salary caps and maximum contracts for players. Whatever a team wants to pay a player once their current contract runs out, they're more than welcome to do so. How much do you think LeBron James would be worth to the New York Knicks? the most valuable team in the league according to that same Forbes report I mentioned earlier. $40 million a year? $50 million? $100 million? The same thing goes for any number of players that are considered to be the best in the league. When you consider how drastically the Cavaliers' revenue numbers increased with the return of James, I struggle to even put a number on what teams would be willing to offer him annually in free agency if the salary cap and maximum player salaries didn't exist. Personally, I've held a number of jobs in my life so far. I've bagged groceries, I've worked in youth development programs at the YMCA, coached basketball, and at one point, I even wanted to be a teacher. Thanks to the support of many of you guys, I now get to create NBA content for a living, and I couldn't be more thankful for that opportunity. But in each of those past jobs I held, I didn't make a lot of money at all, in large part because there were a lot of people in this world that could bag groceries and coach basketball just as well as I could. The potential employee pool was extremely large, and the jobs weren't very specialized, so I wasn't that valuable to the companies I worked for. NBA players have a very specific set of skills that allow them to be the best at what they do. Skills that many of them have been cultivating since they were in elementary school. Millions of kids have the dream of someday making it to the NBA, but only a few hundred people a year get to call themselves an NBA player. Yes, some are born with natural talents and athleticism that make the path to that dream easier, but that dream isn't an easy one to achieve, even for the most naturally gifted of people. These guys have worked extremely hard to get where they are and continue to work extremely hard to stay there. On the surface, yes, they're being paid millions to play a sport, which seems silly, but they have put in the time and effort to become extremely good at what they do, to the point that the market is willing to pay them millions to do it. And that's the whole point. These companies, these teams, value the service these players provide so much that they're willing to pay them millions of dollars a year. And by definition, in the US at least, that's what they're worth, what someone is willing to pay them. When you take the athletics out of the equation and look at it just in terms of value and fair compensation, no, NBA players don't make too much money. And in fact, without a salary cap or max contracts, some of them would make much, much more. And that is all the time I have for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like rating is a great way to let me know. And if you'd like to see more videos just like this, then be sure to subscribe to Sporting Logically for more content every single week. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you all next time.